Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Exchange and Grace for Today, our daily devotional. I pray that you've had a good week. Uh, we're, we've made it through to the weekend. And, um, you know, every day, just pray that you've been encouraged. What we want to do with uh, these devotionals, I keep reminding you, is just open your heart and receive grace every morning. Unmerited favour, that's what we believe and we build our lives around, that Jesus loves us, independent of our performance, independent of what we bring to him, his, his gift to us is righteousness and it's by faith, by simply trusting in him, that we receive all that we need and more. And so every day we just want to encourage you in that and we've been talking this week about lots of different things but today as we get into the weekend I want to ask you the question, do you want to live a carefree life? You know, do you want to live with uh, the, the absence of weight and burden and worry and anxiety? Because I know that I do. So let's talk about that as we head into the weekend. It says in Philippians 4, 6 and 7, some really well-known verses. It says, don't fret or worry. Instead of that, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. As you do that, and before you even know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good will come and will settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. I love that. I, I don't know about you, but I know that I don't set out each day with a list of things that I would like to worry about. You know what I mean? How many of us get up in the morning and go, I need to make my worry list before I do anything here. You know, so you get your pen and paper out of your phone and you make a list of things that potentially could be difficult for you. I mean, we don't do that. In fact, I actually try to do the opposite. I, I try to make a conscious decision not to worry, but there's so many times that I find that long before um, there are thoughts fly around in my head that are starting to weigh me down and I'm imagining the worst case scenario playing out before me. Like it's not long before that happens. You know, that's the truth. And I know many people struggle the same way. Many people struggle, and I think it's, you know, part of our the, the fallenness around us in the world that we live, that people do struggle with similar negative thoughts, negative patterns, and we can feel our emotions change. And even when our emotions are changing, you know, there are physical symptoms that happen. You can get a tight chest, your heart rate can go up, you can get sweaty, people I know have had panic attacks, as almost like, like they dwell on these fears and it starts to build up in them and can honestly overwhelm them. You know, even the world, right, people who don't have faith, people in the world recognize that worry is a problem, that an anxiety is a problem, that it's affecting all levels of society around us. There's so much research done around it now. When we look at the figures, actually, it's frightening. It's incredible to see the kind of things that we worry about. You know, 40%, as I read this thing once, it said 40% uh, of what we worry about is about future events. And those future events don't happen, but we imagine that they will happen. So we're living going, what if, and what if, and you know, 40% of it. 30% is about the past. And the thing about the past is you can't change it, it's done. 12% is about needless health worries. And that, you know, like, you know, people worrying that if they are sick, it's gonna get worse, or they may be sick. 10% uh, in this um, survey said it was like petty concerns. And that means there's only 8% left, if you, you don't need to add it up, I've done it for you, that's over 92%, it means 8% of what we worry about is it could be classed as legitimate, right, by even people in the world. Over 90% of what we spend our time being anxious about is really useless, and there are things that we can't change or things that never happen. Isn't that incredible? So what does the Lord instruct us to do? And this is why I love grace today. The Lord tells us, you know, when you're worried today, or when you feel anxious, or a fearful thought comes, he says, turn that worry into a prayer. He knows that if we can take those thoughts that are troubling us, the things that are weighing us down, and in many cases, they may be affecting our health. But what he says is in that moment, turn them to a prayer, bring them to the Lord, and what we'll find is the weight starts to go and your perspective changes. You see, prayer, as I have, talked on and preached on many times is this interchange. It is a dialogue, although it's not an equal exchange, right? Where two sides sort of relate and listen and share burdens. When we, when we pray, and praying I just mean turn our hearts to the Lord and start to talk to him about what's going on. When we come to him, what happens is we get to let go and he takes from us. We give to him the weight and the burden that's on our shoulders and in exchange, what do we receive? We receive life 
and grace. We receive unmerited favour. We receive peace that the world can never give. We receive encouragement. We receive hope. Because the Lord knows that there will be things in life that concern you. And he shows us in the same moment that we have a choice about which way we will think on those things. You know, this is my own thought, but I believe it's absolutely impossible to really praise God and worry at the same time. It's really hard to do that. Because when, we, what we're, when we're truly praising God, what we're doing is we're magnifying him. It says, you know, in the word, let's magnify him. To magnify something means make him bigger. We put our eyes off of ourselves, off of our situation, everything of this world that grapples for our attention. And what happens is we tune in to Jesus, what his word says, who he has made us to be. And we understand then that at that moment, okay, he is God, he is King, and our identity is as children, as sons of the King. We exalt God, we lift him up. And when we do that, we remind ourselves that he is above it all, that he reigns on high, that he has always been and he will always be. We remember and remind ourselves that he's our Father, our Heavenly Father, who will not, and listen to me, he will not withhold any good from you. He doesn't hold back on you. It says in Psalm 84 that he doesn't withhold any good from those who walk rightly. Now, because of Jesus today, you might think, well, I don't walk rightly, you know? And so I'm gonna be in trouble. No, because of Jesus, right? You're righteous today. You are totally acceptable today. You are right before the Father. And so what that means is you can come boldly to the throne of grace. You can come boldly to Jesus today, knowing that despite your performance, it is faith and trust that has set you free. And the Lord, when he sees your faith and your trust in Jesus and his finished work, he has everything there that will help you in your time of need. In your time of need. Now, listen, I, I know as I practice this in my own life, I, I kind of find the Lord's peace becoming real to me. The peace that lives on the inside of me, actually, what it starts to do, it begins to permeate my thoughts. It begins to reshape and refocus. And, and where there's been like darkness and gloominess and confusion, there starts to be a bit more light and clarity. And then whew, you just start to breathe. Even when I don't have the answers, right? There's this sense of well-being and peace that comes even when you don't know. That's just the grace of God. You know, I, I've, I've given up in many bits of my life trying to be in control. It's a waste of time. And you're just, you just carry stuff that you can't control anyway. You worry about stuff that's out of your control, whether it's people or future or whatever. And actually just surrender to Jesus because he's the one who's been holding it uh, all together, your life and everything else around it. He's the one who holds it together and has been doing that all along. So my big encouragement as we kind of get into this weekend is allow Jesus to take the center stage. Recognize every good work that he has done in your life and magnify his love and his grace for you. That's how you live carefree. Make Jesus bigger. It's not gritting your teeth and all that. It's just make Jesus bigger. Give him your heart, give him your attention, fill your head, fill your heart, listen to worship, read the word, whatever it happens to be. And what you will find is as he becomes bigger, the worries actually will just start to dissipate and will almost without effort, you'll find yourself in a place of peace. Amen. What a great word for the weekend. So, Father, we take um, the, your body today, Lord, in this, um, in this bread. Father, we say thank you for dying for us, Lord. And by your stripes, I declare that we are healed. That's what your word says. So thank you for health and wholeness and completeness in Jesus' name. And Father, we take the cup this morning, Lord, and we say thank you for pouring out your blood for us. It makes us holy, makes us perfect forever. Lord, we're redeemed from every curse. And in faith today, in trust, Lord, we say thank you that that is your, your gift of righteousness to us. Amen. Have a wonderful weekend, folks. Remember, Sunday morning, 11 a.m., tune in to Exchange Live. We're preaching here live in the building. And uh, it's a great opportunity to get together, share it out, let the world know that there is a God of grace who loves them and has blessing and favor for them. And... Uh, it's not a great message to bring to people. So have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching this week. Grace for today. Like and share this. Subscribe. Do all that stuff. Uh, see you Sunday. And then we'll be back on Monday actually for more Grace for today.